Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our live demonstration. My name is Matt Moskal. I'm the MicroTorque product specialist with Atlas Copco. So I'm here today to introduce you to our latest uh, collaboration with Universal Robots. Uh, what we're going to go through today is the Universal Robot system uh, connected to the Atlas Copco system um, and show you how uh, these things work together. So, uh, and how these are going to help you with your assembly auto automated assembly process. So uh, why are you here today? So if you're an integrator, you're probably here looking for a system that is versatile, uh, has a lot of functionality to it, and something easy to program so that it makes it uh, simpler for you to provide products uh, to your end customer. If you're an end user, maybe you're looking for a system that's, that's once it's in your facility, it's easier for you to make your adjustments without having to call in an expert, uh, or you're looking to improve the quality of the products always uh, to get to send those things down the line. Or maybe you're looking to add another system that will help you with your industry 4.0 initiatives. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to first introduce you to the different uh, components that we have here. And then we're going to install a couple of fasteners in the parts that we have. And then we're going to open up the hood and take a look and see exactly what's happening in the background of this system and as things are run down. So to get started, uh, what we have here is a Universal Robots uh, Cobot. It's an E5 uh, system. So what the five means is that this can handle up to five kilograms of uh, 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 payload on the system. Underneath that, we hear it here, we have the uh, Atlas Copco NTF MTF 6000 uh, controller. On the end of the robot here, we have a QMC uh, made for automation tool. Over here next to the controller, we have the smart vacuum pump and we have a screw presenter here. And then last but not least, we have a fixture in which we're gonna install our part, where we're gonna put our parts to install the screws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, a substrate. This is aluminum. And we're going to grab a circuit board here. Put this into the fixture, close the lid. Then we're going to start the robot sequence. So what I'm doing right now is the robot's actually running at about half speed. And this helps me walk you through and explain some of the things as they're happening. So as you can see, the robot moved over to the screw presenter. It grabbed a screw. It moves over to the fixture, installs the screw, and then as you can see, the uh, fixture is uh, set up to light up once it installs the screw with either green for good or red for bad. And also, if you notice on the controller, we also lit up green, which says that the screw is installed properly. Okay, we're gonna run one more screw here. So again, we're gonna go to the screw presenter and pick up the screw and place it into the part. Now, if you, if you can hear in the background, which this, this pump is actually very quiet, but the vacuum pump does not kick on until the robot moves over to the screw presenter and, uh, and then shuts off again once it has installed the screw. Now, what you'll also notice at some points of the sequence, uh, sometimes the robot will not pick up the screw properly. We can set in the system um, that when it doesn't pick up the screw properly, it will go back up to we set it in the system this time for three times that it's going to try. And if it fails during any of those uh, after three times, then it's going to send a signal back up through the network to let somebody know that there's a problem with the robot. So also with this final installation, uh, if we have any problems, well, then we will get a red light there. We'll also get a red light on the controller letting know there's a problem. It'll send a flag up to somebody and let them know. So that's it for the for the demonstration. Now let's uh, take a look under the hood and kind of see what else is going on here. So basically this system is meant to increase your productivity. Uh, and we do that through an automation friendly environment that we've created here uh, in our venture with Universal Robots and Atlas Capco. We've created a smart system in that the controller is going to help provide lots of additional information back to the user. And as I'll show you here in just a minute, through our tightening technologies, we are actually more precise 
and accurate in the screws that we were driving into the system. So let's go to the first thing that we saw here. So what if we saw the universal robots uh, cobot? So while the robot is actually very, very interesting, it can do a lot of different things. It has lots of functionality. It's also very accurate and repeatable. Um, one of the things that uh, Universal has done in working with us is we've created a plugin of software that allows the user or the person that has to do the programming a very user-friendly environment to create their programs. It's basically a tree structure. It lets people go in and put in different variables and different uh, settings to make sure that the robot does what it's supposed to. And a lot of this is done through drop down and pick list. Uh, also, uh, through our engineers, um, our engineers have done a lot of the work in the background so that your engineers don't have to learn how to do it. So it's very intuitive. It's a wizard like programming environment. We can also put in pictures in this environment to help the uh, programmer or the engineer who has to set up the robot. Uh, to walk them through things. And then we can also set in other items in here where if maybe they need to test to make sure the robot moves over to pick up the screw uh, accurately, or uh, if we need to make sure that the vacuum levels are set properly, all those little pieces can be put into this environment uh, that makes it very user-friendly uh, for your people to make their designs and changes. So along with that, also, what did we see? We saw the MTF 6000 controller. The MTF 6000 controller is really the heart of the MicroTorx system. It uh, provides a lot of different things. We have intelligent tightening processes on the one side of the brain. And on the other side of the brain, we can also handle all the full process control. This co uh, controller really is more like a smart PLC. We can have multiple torque programs in here. Uh, with different types of graphic data and analysis. We can uh, use different advanced tightening strategies, not just tighten to torque or angle. We can also do some other tightening strategies. We can uh, detect if uh, a thread when it's being driven in is damaged or if the bit slips uh, during the drive-in process. We also can communicate with other systems and we can remotely program this system, uh, so that we don't have to walk out to the floor every time something goes wrong. Uh, and we can handle lots of different automated and manual applications. So let's talk a little bit. I made mention of the uh, smart tightening. So we have in the system, we can very easily and usually we recommend starting with a multi-step tightening. So what a multi-step tightening does for you is it allows you just come in and first get the screw seated by maybe starting very slowly or maybe starting in a counterclockwise direction. And then once the screw is seated, then we can go to a higher speed to drive the screw down and then slow down once again to do the final part of the tightening of the screw. The high speed pieces can also help you reduce your cycle time, uh, which is what we really all want is, you know, to be able to move parts through more quickly and make the best use of the time that we have during the production process. Also in the uh, MTF 6000, we have some unique tightening strategies. Uh, the first of which is what we call torque seating monitoring. So what this does is it drives a screw down to a final torque, but in the process, it is also monitoring the amount of clamping torque. So the clamping torque is the point at which the screw head contacts the surface and everything that's applied after that point uh, is all clamping the parts together. So while we can, no one can easily measure clamping, um, the clamping, uh, clamping force, sorry, uh, measure clamping force, clamping uh, torque is the next best thing. So we can monitor that. We can identify if a part was uh, had the right amount of clamping torque, and we can also flag you if uh, not enough clamping torque was applied in the joint. And this could be due to variation in your uh, supplier's parts. Maybe they, the screw is slightly smaller or slightly larger, which is increases or decreases the amount of, of torque on the joint. So torque seating monitoring is nice because it's always letting you monitor, but it's still always driving to a final torque. So the next strategy that we have in the system is the thing called seating control strategy. What seating control strategy does is it allows the system to automatically adjust the clamping torque so that the clamping torque is the same every time. So now if you have material that varies either because the screw has been run in multiple times, like in an, a repair process, or if you just have varying material from your supplier, 
uh, we can always make sure that the clamping torque is applied the same every time. So this way, uh, really what's important is clamping torque. And we kind of help uh, design engineers get around the, the habit of always writing their specs to final torque. And instead we can start looking at clamping torque and help them uh, do things uh, a little bit better and decrease the amount of recalls and defects that you have in your parts. Also uh, worth mentioning here, the system actually can kick into an automatic rework mode. So should the cobot or robot uh, install a fastener improperly, we can trigger uh, through the uh, uh, interface, we can trigger the robot to back it out and try again, which reduces the need for quality gates on your production line and also rework stations. So let's talk about uh, the smart automated factory. So uh, as this system is installing the fasteners, we can uh, add additional information to each, in each installation. We can record every torque trace of every screw that is run down. We can attach that to a serial number or a batch number or a lot number, and then uh, attach the drive-in information of all the different fasteners. And then that gives us the ability through a system called ToolsNet 8 to actually go back and look at our data and see where our problems have occurred. And if we've had defective product, we can trace it back. And traceability is very, very important, especially nowadays uh, where everyone's looking for ways to improve their process. So along with the continuous uh, process improvement, uh, once we've identified issues, we can go back into the Tools Talk MT, which is the software for programming the screwdriver, and make our adjustments. And then we go back through the circle again and start running parts and see how our adjustments have affected our, uh, our capabilities. So the complete traceability through ToolsNet 8 is very important, really helps us uh, improve our processes and uh, produce better parts. What else did we see? Uh, we also saw the smart vacuum pump. Now the smart vacuum pump is, is pretty uh, covert and when it sits off to the side and a lot of times it's not even mounted on the bench, really takes up very little space or um, resources on the, on the workbench. It plugs directly into the back of the MTF 6000 controller so it draws all its power from there. And through that cable, it also provides an inter interface to the controller so that the controller can understand if a screw is properly picked up or if it's tilted, and we can send a signal over to the robot to either tell the screw, tell it to go back and pick up another screw immediately, which saves cycle time, or you can tell that, that the screw is tilted uh, and tell it to drop it and go get another one. And this is important because a lot in traditional applications, if the screw's tilted, the system really has no way of knowing that until it starts to drive it in. And at that point, you either A, lose cycle time, or B, you damage a part. Uh, both of which cost you money. So also, what did we see? We saw the QMC or the QMT tool mounted on the end of the robot. So the QMC tool is really made for automation. It's very um, user-friendly. It's very lightweight. Um, it has a telescopic front end. So this makes it easier to program the robot in driving the screw because uh, you have 10 millimeters of travel and compression with the spring so that you don't have to make sure that your feed rate in the Z direction is uh, always accurate or right. It doesn't have to be as accurate. Uh, so we can use the spring tension to drive in the screw. The bit is also ESD protected, which means it's so it's bit grounded. So it means we don't impart any sort of static electricity. And this is especially important in the electronics industry. And then we have a robust motor inside of here that's designed to last uh, one and a half million cycles before it needs to be calibrated and up to three million cycles uh, before we have to do any type of uh, preventive maintenance. So also with the, the size of the tool, it's much smaller, much lighter. So the robot uh, that you need, that you need, excuse me, the robot that you need to hold the tool and use the tool can be much smaller, saves you some money there. Uh, and it's also designed to be attached very easily. And it um, takes up a lot less space, so it's more maneuverable to get into certain parts. So what this translates into is a uh, lower automation cost. It's quicker to ramp up. Uh, you get a lot of productivity out of it and a lot of uptime. 
So uh, just to give you a quick uh, summary, so um, we know we're uh, we understand your concerns for implementing an automated solution. We've been in automation for quite a few years now, and this latest uh, collaboration with Universal Robots helps us to uh, provide a reliable and ready to use system, something that you can use right out of the box pretty much, um, and profit from a straightforward uh, implementation um, when it comes to uh, creating your environment and putting your robot in. So basically uh, what you've seen here is you know, we're ready to move uh, your factory into the future. We can help you react more quickly and help you reduce costs. We can reduce the number of specialists that you need to support an installation. Uh, information is easily available for you to make smart decisions regarding your process, and we can help you move into Industry 4.0. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, if you need further info, please visit our virtual booth and join our chat. And uh, I really thank you for attending today. Have a great day.